Welcome back to Train Signal Citrix Zen App Training. You're watching Navigating Delivery Services Console Lesson. This is going to be a relatively short lesson. What I want to do in this lesson is I want to set the framework and introduce you to the Delivery Services Console, which is the management console where you're going to be spending most of your time administering your Citrix Zen App environment. Now, for those of you that are familiar, with ZenApp and have been using it for years, you, you'll know that the evolution of the management console you know, has taken a while. We started off with the Citrix management console and before that there were several other management tools that would allow you to manage the environment. It wasn't very centralized. And for a period of time there was always the Citrix management console and there was the access management console. So there was the CMC and there was the AMC. So there was a lot of different management consoles and you could do certain things in certain consoles but not in everything in one place and it really took Citrix a, a long period of time to integrate all of these and to be able to centralize them in a single management console for that reason I wanted to take you through what it looks like where are some of the features now what is the construct especially if you haven't used it before if this is uh, your first time using ZenApp with ZenApp 6 I want to give you a little bit of an overview on what to expect from a management console perspective so we're gonna talk about the discovery process how you discover objects within your management console we're gonna talk about my views and how you can set up views uh, that would make it easier for you to find the objects that you're responsible for this is especially helpful if you're in a large organization we're gonna talk about the configuration tools object within the delivery services console we're gonna talk about Zen app which is where you're going to be doing most of your configuration and management so there's an object within the management console called Zen app and we're gonna go through that we're gonna talk about a little bit about alerts and I'll talk a little bit about work groups so from a presentation perspective it's gonna be relatively short so let's go ahead and dig in and start exploring and navigating the delivery services console Alright, so we're back on our Citrix ZenApp server, XA01. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Start, All Programs. We're going to click on Citrix. We're going to expand Management Consoles, and we're going to click on Citrix Delivery Services Console. Now you'll notice that the first thing that comes up is the discovery process. But before we talk about the discovery process, it's worth mentioning that the Citrix Delivery Services Console is built around Microsoft's MMC 3.0 technology. So technically, under the hoods, the Citrix Delivery Services Console can be viewed as another snap-in to MMC 3.0. So that was worth mentioning. Now, what is the discovery process? Typically, the first time you run your Delivery Services Console on a new computer, the discovery process is going to launch automatically. The discovery process is simply a, a method by which you can query for your Citrix objects via IMA. And the way to do that is the discovery process comes up. It's going to come up with a wizard. We're going to click on Next. You're going to select which objects you want to query, which extensions are available out there that you can add to this delivery services console so you can manage them. So I know that I have a ZenApp farm. So I want to add the extensions. I want to be able to manage my ZenApp farm from this delivery services console. As a result, I'm able to query against the ZenApp infrastructure and gather information for my farm so I can add it and manage it. By the same token, I don't have any infrastructure. I don't have anything configured for single sign-on. That's more of a platinum feature. I don't have anything configured for that. So if I go forward with the query, it's going to ask me for, for some server, for something to query in order to gather information about the single sign-on infrastructure. Considering I don't have that product installed or configured, we're going to go ahead and uncheck this because there's no reason to query against it. Now I have ZenApp configured. We're going to click Next. Now, you can add the local server, so if you want the discovery process to query against the local server, you can simply click Add Local Computer. If you want it, if this was installed on your desktop, for example, or on your laptop, and you want, and obviously adding local computer in that case wouldn't help, so you can click on Add and add the fully qualified domain or the IP address of any of your ZenApp servers, click OK, it would add them to the list and as such the delivery services console discovery process can query that computer for the information that it needs. So I'm going to click Next. 
And that's about it for the discovery process. Once it um, gathers all the information it needs, you can click on finish. If there was any errors, you can find them in here. You can double click on them and you'll get more information about that particular error. And then you can uh, resolve or remedy the situation if it, if it comes up. So I'm going to click on finish. And you'll notice that the ZenApp infrastructure has already been added. Now my farm is Encom. That was the farm name that we gave during the setup and configuration of my ZenApp server. And underneath my farm, I have all of these objects. Now let's go real quick through these objects and then we'll, we'll circle back and take a look at the different objects and components within the delivery services console itself. So let's go ahead and expand this for a better view. Now obviously, this is the top of the route, this is the farm. Now for those of you that come from, uh, that have used Zenab before, or presentation server, you typically were able to right click on the farm and drag down to the farm properties in order for you to be able to manage it or configure it. So you'll notice you still have the farm properties here, but it's significantly reduced. There is literally nothing in here with the exception of the configuration logging, which you can enable or disable for you configure the database we'll talk about configuration logging a little later on in the next lesson so for now I just want to focus on the fact that if you right click the farm and go to properties you'll notice you don't have anything all of the settings that were previously here ICA bandwidth server everything that was previously here has now been moved into policies and when we talk about policies in the policies lesson we'll get we'll do an extended walkthrough and I'll show you where everything is at today but I wanted to mention this just in case it catches you by surprise so for those of you that have never used it, you'll notice that when you select the farm on the left, you'll have several different tabs here on the right, and every tab will display different types of information. So for example, the contents tab is going to give you everything that's under the farm. If you go on information, information will give you a little more information about the name of the farm, the current session count, the servers in the farm, the published applications, published desktops, published content in the farm. So it gives you a little bit of a, of a snapshot of an overview about what's going on. If you click on alerts, any types of alerts that might come up, any errors of, of any sort that require attention will be uh, listed over here. So you can take a look at them and, and remedy them very quickly. From a user's perspective, if there are any users that are connected, you'll be able to see them. Offline sessions, again, will be displayed here. Uh, configured file, this is basically information, you know, file types, configured file types, uh, what types are configured that to respond or are configured with ZenApp so that ZenApp can launch applications, uh, etc. Everything, this is basically informational at this point. It'll give you the current settings, so once we configure more farm settings, you'll be able to see uh, more settings down here. Right now, the only th thing you see under the farm settings is the configuration logging. Hotfix, this uh, gives you information about your hotfixes, what, what are the different hotfixes that are installed um, on the farm, with, on the different servers in the farm, actually. And then you have a hotfix summary, so you'll notice that um, ZenApp 1, uh, this is the uh, product revision or the product version. This is the hotfix count. So again, it'll give you all the details about all the different servers in, in your farm with more information about what hotfix levels and service packs have been installed. You can click on choose columns here and it'll be able to give you, uh, you can add columns or remove columns. So if you wanted it to be to display in a certain view, you can also modify that so that it is exactly the way you, you'd like to see it. So because I, I tend to do this because sometimes there's just too much information. I'm not really interested in it. So I customize my view uh, by doing that. Let's see what else is up here. Hotfix comparison result. This is pretty cool because it'll display all the servers. And is, if there's any discrepancy between the servers, you'll be able to see that um, ZenApp 01, for example, has feature pack 1, whereas ZenApp 6 doesn't have a feature pack. So this is a quick snapshot that could tell you the different feature packs or different hotfixes that are installed on each one of your ZenApp servers in order to keep them consistent. You want to keep all your ZenApp servers consistent unless there's a compelling reason or there's a particular uh, hotfix that breaks something that you don't want to install it for a, for a particular application. But if not, for all intents and purposes, all ZenApp servers should be at the same hotfix and feature pack level. Administrators, we're going to talk a little bit more about it in the next lesson when we talk about role-based access and delegated access, so I'm going to keep that for later. Applications is where you would do most of your publishing of applications and desktops and contents, and we have a, a lesson dedicated to that, but I'm just giving you a walkthrough here 
to see um, what's going on. Moving on to history. History will show you everything that's happened on your farm, every task, every configuration change, so on and so forth. Considering we haven't configured the logging configuration database yet, you don't have anything to display and the farm is relatively new and fresh anyway. Um, load balancing policies, we're going to talk about those extensively in later lessons, but you'll notice that every every one of those nodes that I click on will display tabs that gives you more information and almost every one of those nodes has an information button or tab that gives you a snapshot about what's going on with regards to this node so you can find it helpful and then the alerts tab here will give you alerts that are very customized that are very selective to this particular node so that you're not cluttered with alerts about everything so if you wanted to focus your attention on just Hey, show me what's going on with regards to load balancing policies alerts. You can come here and, and select that and it'll display that for you. The load evaluators, there are two load evaluators by default. This is basically the criteria by which ZenApp will distribute new incoming sessions to the different ZenApp servers. So by default, which is what we have here, the way that ZenApp will distribute the load is based on the user count on a server. So if ZenApp A or ZenApp 01 has 20 users and ZenApp 02 has 3 users, then the next time a new user connects, that user will automatically go to the server with the least amount of users. This is what the default policy stipulates. The advanced policy gives you a little more granularity, a little more, it's a little smarter. So instead of just load balancing the servers based on the user count, it load balances the servers based on the CPU utilization and the memory utilization. So you can in effect very much have a ZenApp 01 server with two users on it but with a CPU and memory utilization of 70 percent and then have ZenApp 02 with 20 users on it but memory and CPU utilization of 15 percent the next incoming session will go to ZenApp 02 even though it has a higher user count so we'll talk about those later in greater detail but you'll notice up here again it gives you a bunch of tabs that you can uh, browse through again alerts information are almost standard about everything usage by application this will give you a, a report about which application is being used and how much it's being used this is good if you want to justify more infrastructure or if your uh, boss or your manager requests information about what's going on with particular applications if they're doing billbacks to certain departments that have requested these applications this would be useful and helpful here usage by server would be something that you would be able to use because you're able to generate that report and take a look at the historicals of that particular server so these two tabs are are very important to note policies I'm gonna leave for later we're gonna spend two lessons around policies so so I'm gonna leave those for for later but again alerts and computers are two tabs here servers is where you'll have all of your ZenApp servers listed again you have several tabs here with uh, more information about who's logged in, how many users are, lo are currently logged into the ZenApp server, the hotfix details of this particular server. The same hotfix stuff that we saw at the, at the farm level, now we're seeing at a more granular level with the server. Now if you select that server itself, again you'll see the same tabs you have uh, the information which gives you a snapshot about what's going on. So if I right click ZenApp 01 for those of you that have used this before, you'll notice that there are no more properties. So you can't go into the properties of that particular ZenApp server. You have other tasks that you can uh, select. But again, it's very, very limited as far as what you can do now. You can no longer manage or configure that particular ZenApp server the same way you used to be able to by right-clicking it or going to properties. The other thing that I want to mention before we move on is for those of you that remember the access management console we had a you know a second column here we always had a column on the left a second column for quick access quick links quick tasks that we could select that also has now disappeared all of the configuration of the particular server has moved into policies now with regards to worker groups worker groups are really cool and something new with the um, ZenApp 6 what worker groups allows you to do is typically when you're building your ZenApp environment especially in larger ZenApp farms we tend to silo our servers so we'll have servers that are very 
tied to certain applications. You'll have 10 servers of a CRM application and you'll have 10 servers for community based access and office applications and so on and so forth. And you grow your infrastructure by adding more servers into that silo of servers. Now previously the way for us to organize those was you know you'd create folders and you'd you know, just move the servers under the right folder based on the application or based on some kind of a, a common denominator that you can group that will make sense for you to group them under. Now with worker groups, worker groups takes it one step further and I'll talk more about worker groups when we talk about it in the policies lesson but just to give you an example you can create a worker group add servers of the same type or that ser serve the same function or maybe in the same geographical region into that worker group and then you can apply policies against them you can publish applications to them you can even take it as far as you can create an OU in Active Directory and every time you add a Zen App server to that OU it automatically adds that server to this work group and automatically gets all the policies that are applied to this work group so very handy very useful we're gonna talk about this extensively again Zones, we talked about that in the earlier lesson when we, when we introduced zones and what, what it does. Today I have one zone. All of my servers are in this particular zone. If I have another geographic region, maybe I have another floor, maybe I have another data center. If I have another geographic region where there's Zen app servers, I can most certainly create another zone and add those servers into that zone. Zones are the equivalent of subnets sort of speak where you're grouping your Zen app servers for localized IMA traffic to improve performance. Single sign-on we're not going to talk about it's outside of the scope that's for Citrix's password manager product and allows you to extend single sign-on. Now what's the power of the delivery services console? Why do I have single sign-on here? You'll notice that the delivery services console is, is a very modularized console. You can have extensions, you can have plugins, so to speak, that can plug into it and extend its capacity, extend its features. For example, single sign on. Think of it as a plugin or as an extension to the delivery services console, which would allow you to manage more components in your Citrix infrastructure in general, whether it's Zen App or single sign on or other things. So think about it this way so the Zen App and single sign on, you'll notice that they're at the same level. So from a single sign-on perspective, if you had any single sign-on infrastructure, you'd be able to manage it from here as well. Now from a configuration tools perspective, you know, configuration tools is just another node. Think of it as any third party stuff that Citrix wants to add to the delivery services console. It has a place where it can plug it in. So for example, in this case, it has the hotfix management under the configuration tools. Now, You'll notice that Citrix Resources is the parent node, is the node that's going to group everything under your Citrix infrastructure. Your, these are all your Citrix resources. Now, there's nothing that's stopping Citrix from tomorrow integrating Zen Desktop Management, for example, under the Delivery Services Console. It would be a node under here that expands that, and now you have the ability to manage all of your Citrix infrastructure from the Delivery Services Console because it's very modularized, because it's based on MMC and allows plugins. It could be a framework that could group a lot of the Citrix management consoles across the different products, and you can manage them here and organize them in here as well. My views is interesting especially if you're in a large organization. If you're in a large organization, you're typically not going to be responsible for the entire farm. You're not going to be responsible for all the applications and all the servers. You're going to be responsible for a subset of it. Now, without views, you would have to log in and you would have to browse to the servers you're responsible for, browse to the applications that you're responsible for. And I've seen Citrix farms with 2,000 applications in them. Trust me, that can become very difficult when you're navigating through folders to get to the applications that you're responsible for. What my views allows you to do is it allows you to configure the resources, the Citrix resources that you are responsible for and customize your view so that you're seeing only these resources. It's really not more than just pointers that basically puts everything in the way you like it just these servers just these applications just this content so that you view it easier and you're able to find your stuff in an easier manner now from a search perspective if you're um, you know if you need to find something if you need to find an object because there's a lot of objects in the in the environment and you need to look look for something i mean search is pretty self explanatory you can look for any object within the citrix infrastructure here and it's going to find it
Alerts is going to give you um, alerts on what's going on um, in your Citrix infrastructure in general. This is going to give you a global view of the alerts across the different components within the environment. If you wanted more granular views, you saw how every one of the nodes on the left here had an alerts tab that allows you to view alerts specifically for that particular item. Now the last thing I want to talk about in this lesson is we ran the discovery process when the Delivery Services Console originally launched. Now that's a one-time process that you do every time the Delivery Services Console is installed on a new computer or is run for the first time. Now what if the server that you're running the query against in the discovery process isn't working for some reason and you need to reconfigure the discovery process so that it can query a different server or if you're just trying to query a different server for whatever reason. There are two things you can do. If some things aren't showing up properly um, your plugins aren't showing up properly and you just want to run the discovery process against the same server you can select configuration tools right click and select run discovery it's gonna run the discovery again now if you wanted to change the server against which you're running the discovery you can select Citrix resources right click and then select configure and run discovery and this will launch the wizard all over again and you can go through it and change the server change the components that you're querying so on and so forth so I just wanted to mention that just in case you were wondering how you can reaccess that discovery process once more now this was a relatively short lesson folks um, we're gonna switch back to our presentation and we're gonna recap what we've learned Don't you wish all the lessons were this short? <laughs> nah, don't bet on it. You got some beefy lessons coming your way in the next uh, few lessons when we get into policies and so on and so forth. So we started off by talking about the different consoles, the evolution of the different management consoles uh, that Citrix has introduced over the years. And again, we talked about, for those of you that have been using Citrix for a while, since the Citrix Metaframe XP with the Citrix Management Console and then the Access Management Console, there was always you know, two management consoles and you can do certain tasks in, in this console and some other tasks in another console. You have to launch both of them at different intervals. So it was kind of annoying. And it took Citrix quite a while to be able to centralize all of these services, all of these tools into a centralized management console, which is what they've done with the delivery services here. And they've, they've come a long way. They really have in order to give you a single pane of glass. Now we talked about the discovery process and how the discovery process allows you to run a query, a discovery against certain assets within your Citrix infrastructure. For example, in our case, we ran it against the Zenapp infrastructure, which gave us a response of the farm and we were able to navigate it and so on and so forth. But the discovery process, you can point against your single sign-on infrastructure, against other Citrix-related infrastructures, and it would allow you to manage them from the same management console. We also talked about the fact that the Discovery Services console is an MMC, is a Microsoft MMC 3.0 console so to speak so you could technically snap it into just MMC itself if you really needed to we talked about my views and how it relates to you within a larger organization and the fact that you would be responsible for a subset of the farm and you have the ability within the delivery services console to customize a view of the console for yourself have all your resources all your servers all your applications so you don't have to go browse through everyone's applications and resources to get to the ones that you are concerned with we talked about configuration tools and how it allows sort of like these third-party tools these extensions these plugins that Citrix has for example you already have the hotfix management under the configuration tools and, and how you can snap things under it we talked about the Zenapp node and how all of the farm related settings all of the farm related management happens under the Zenapp node we talked about alerts in general so you have different places where you can view alerts you can view alerts for all of your Citrix infrastructure you can view alerts only for Zenapp and Zenapp related and you can drill down to the different components the different nodes on the left and view alerts just for that so you can get very very granular with what you can do with regards to alerts
We talked about work groups as well and the fact that from a Citrix administrator perspective, we're always siloing our servers. You know, a particular application will get a subset of servers. Worker groups allows us to logically group these servers, but takes it extends the capabilities of more than just grouping it for organizational purposes, which is what you can use for folders, right? Worker groups allows you to publish applications against this group of servers, allows you to create an OU so that every time you add a server in Active Directory, it automatically adds it to this worker group. It extends the functionality. You can configure policies against the worker group. So it just makes it easier for you to manage, especially if you have farms with hundreds of servers. It gives you a subset or it gives you an easier way of managing your servers. Finally, I hope this lesson was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.